Hello everybody, it's me again with another one of my rather lengthy videos, I'm afraid. <laughs> I harvested my cauliflower, at least two of the large heads of cauliflower. They grow remarkably fast. I've never grown it before. I'm so surprised at how quickly they grew. But anyway, I have made pickled cauliflower, and that's the first half of this video. And after that, I show you how I'm trying to store the eight cara seed potatoes that I'm saving to plant next year. If anybody thinks that I've done something that's very wrong here and they're going to rot on me or something, please let me know. And then I'm doing some more harvesting potatoes and whatever to show you. I want to show you the compost pile, um, one that's a year and a half old that will soon be moved inside of the hoopos and added to the grow beds in there. And lastly, of course, another little look at the Chanticleer chicks, who are eight weeks old today and growing like weeds. I've been still. trying to determine if these cauliflower are big enough to pick. And the method that I've used, I was in a large grocery store today, a Sobeys, and I went over to the cauliflower and went like this. And uh, mine is just about the same size as what they're selling, so I'm saying this is ready to pick. I've got two this size and two or three that are smaller. I'm gonna pick the two big ones and I want to try making some pickled cauliflower. So here goes my first cauliflower ever. I think the hens will enjoy the leaves. Well, I guess they're not exactly the same size. The one on the left is a bit smaller head, but anyway, the recipe for the <coughs> excuse me, the recipe for the pickled cauliflower calls for two heads, and that'll give me several jars. I'm sure there's also small onions that go in with it, so I'll probably get three or four jars out of it. Let's proceed and see how it works out. Well, I've cut the cauliflower up into little florets, I guess you might call them. And I don't know, there's enough there, like I say, I think for several pint jars. Uh, it says to use two cups of small pearl onions. Well, I bought a 10-ounce package, and I'm going to use the 10-ounce package. I know that's two cups or more than two cups. And normally, I always thought pearl onions have a white skin. These are called golden pearl onions, which means they're small yellow onions, I think. Anyway, uh, the instructions are to pour hot scalding water on them and let them set for a while and that makes them easier to slip the peelings off I guess so I will come back after these have set and I've drained off the hot water well I just tried one of the onions took it out of the hot water and it does I guess make the peeling a little easier to come off Well, putting them in the hot water did help. It made it quite easy to peel. Nice little white onions now. Now for the brining process. One cup of pickling salt. I'm using coarse salt. Not that it makes any difference because there's going to be water added here in a minute to cover it. So the salt's just going to be melted anyway. Seems like a lot of salt. It sits in that for 18 hours and then you drain it and rinse it. Well, you know, I had just the right amount of water. <laughs> I'll 
probably stir that a couple of times to later on to make sure that the salt has all dissolved but it now brines for 18 hours until you move on to the next step in the process well, i'm about to prepare the flavored vinegar for lack of anything else to call it i guess that the cauliflower and onions will be bottled in uh, the recipe calls for three cups of white vinegar and if you've seen some of my previous canning videos I don't like the stuff I use cider vinegar so there's three cups of cider vinegar in there to which you add a cup of sugar two tablespoons of mustard seeds I'm using white mustard seeds one tablespoon of celery seeds and it called for one small uh, hot red pepper well that doesn't mean a thing doesn't, it didn't say what uh, variety of pepper to use and I mean there are lots of hot red peppers including um, you know scotch bonnets and ghost peppers and whatever when they've turned red which are the hottest on the scale down to a red jalapeno which in my opinion has very little heat so I'm going with uh, the Thai birdside chilies I bought some more fresh ones the other day and I'm going to put three in and I have uh, sliced them into little rings leaving seeds and all that would be quite a bit of heat but uh, that's my taste I like quite a bit of heat so if you're going to follow this recipe you add as much or as little of hot chilies that you want to add to it but that's three of the Thai chilies sliced as I said I guess seeds and all left in and here's another place where I am diverging from the recipe again it didn't mention putting in turmeric uh, I like the flavor of turmeric in pickles and also the turmeric will turn them yellow both the onions and the uh, cauliflower will turn yellow uh, which is what it looks like when you get it in a bottle of sweet mix pickles and there's some pickled onions and some pickled uh, cauliflower in there and that's what I want it to look like and as I said I like the flavor also of turmeric so this is one teaspoon of powdered turmeric and that will get uh, heated to the boiling point and then the uh, vegetables will be added uh, once they have finished their 18 hours of brining and been thoroughly rinsed to get rid of any of the salt that's on the surface and I will bring you back and show you that in just a moment. Well, the onions and the broccoli have been in the brine solution now for 18 hours according to instructions and now they get uh, drained and rinsed thoroughly before they go in the vinegar, vinegar mixture. Instructions say to bring the vinegar solution to a boil and it's just come to a boil and then to add the uh, cauliflower and onions and uh, simmer it at a low simmer for 10 minutes until they're just barely tender so that's the next part of this process I guess turmeric is already starting to do its job it's turning the cauliflower yellow which you may or may not like but that's what I'm looking for 
Well, I must have done something right. The recipe said that it would make four pint jars, and that's exactly what I got. Not packed terribly tightly, but that's all of the cauliflower and the onions in four pint jars. And now you add the uh, uh, vinegar liquid to each bottle. I'll come back when I finish doing that. I had enough cauliflower and onions to fill the four pint jars, but I didn't have enough of the vinegar solution. It filled the three jars and there was very little left over, so I mixed up a second batch of the vinegar. I'm doing it as a, a one third of all the other ingredients that went into it. A third, uh, one cup of vinegar and then a third of a cup of sugar and, and everything else divided by a third. and brought that up to the boil and put it on the last bottle. The instructions say that you can now uh, just let them seal and keep them in the refrigerator for use or put them in a hot water canning bath for 10 minutes and that's what I'm going to do. No need to show you that or bring you back what they look like afterwards. They look pretty much like this but I'm going to put them in a boiling hot water canning bath for 10 minutes and then have to wait a few weeks to see what they taste like. I've been trying to come up with a method of safely storing and keeping my uh, cara potato seeds to seed potatoes to plant next year. I've saved eight, which was hard because they're delicious and I wanted to eat them, <laughs> but I've saved eight of them. And what I'm going to do, and hopefully it will work, is I'm placing them in a cardboard box with... Uh, wood shavings, the same wood shavings that I use, um, these are clean ones, not out of the hen house, but same wood shavings that I use on the floor and in the nesting boxes in the chicken coop. Um, I buy it in bales. I'm not sure how much a bale cost me, but one bale is good enough for one time when I clean out the chicken coop. And in the winter time when you don't clean out the chicken coop because you want deep litter, I just keep adding a bale every month or so, so that they always have fresh litter to walk around on. They're dry wood shavings, and what I will do is close the box up and then put it on a shelf in the basement, and I plan to uh, open it up and check them at least once a month just to make sure that they're not spoiling or sprouting or whatever. I'm thinking in the dark and in this dry environment, not wet or anything, that they hopefully won't sprout, but time will tell. And I think that's all I'll do to it. I won't uh, seal it up with tape or anything because I want it to breathe. So, we will see. Hopefully I have eight cara potato seeds to plant in the spring. Well, I've been out doing a bit of harvesting. Those are hen food. When they get that big, I don't care for the zucchini, but the hens love them, so those will be turned into eggs. Next to it, I think I found one patch of uh, red norlin. These are volunteers from last year's crop, but I mistakenly left in the ground. I think there are more volunteers of both Red Norland and the one next to it, which is also a volunteer. That's Irish Cobbler. I think there are more. I just can't seem to locate the vines after they died off, and they're in with the squash vines. So as soon as we have a killing frost and I pull the dead squash vines out of there, I'm going to dig that bed over to see what I can find. And last but not least, that's what remains of my Yukon Gold. I have been using them now for, oh, I don't know, six weeks or more, I guess, whenever I wanted potatoes. I've been going out and digging a few, so there, there would have been more, maybe double that amount, but it still it isn't a, it isn't a great harvest. Uh, where I planted them, it's next to a rose bush that uh, I'm proud of because I started it from seed years ago. Well, evidently, all the nutrients in the 
soil from the compost and whatever where I've planted these things for the last couple of years has really made that rose bush take off well it shaded them out half of the bed was shaded out by the rose bush so I'm in the process now of moving the bed and what I'll plant in it next year it won't be potatoes again but I've got to get it further away from the rose bush it's just soil that I uh, save when I dump out containers in the fall and I also add to that uh, a wheelbarrow full or a couple of wheelbarrows full of the barn dressing and droppings from the chickens in the fall and at that age over the winter it seems to work quite well I didn't have to add any other fertilizer anyway I'm sort of killing two birds with one stone here hopefully you can see the different color of the three hands the blue one to the left uh, indicates the minimum temperature the black one in the center indicates the current temperature and the red one indicates the maximum temperature I haven't reset this since sometime oh, early summer sometime I'm not quite sure when that was but it's gone all summer and uh, we've had a couple of cool nights up at the house uh, night before last was down to five degrees and last night improved a bit went down to eight degrees but according to this under the bench in the hoop house it has gone down to about two and a half degrees which is getting pretty close to that frost level uh, the current temperature uh, has nothing to do with it's, it's currently um, readjusting it was up in the high 20s when it was in the hoop house but I just brought it outside and it's going down now to the outside temperature here and the maximum is about 47 degrees Sometime this summer it got up to 47 degrees in the hoop house. That's 100 and, uh, 10, well, about 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So that gives you that little part. And the second stone that I'm trying to show you here is the compost. This is a looking down into one of my compost piles. I emptied this bin out, um, well it would have been a year ago this past spring, and all last summer and into the fall I added whatever, uh, plants and things that were being composted out of the garden, kitchen garden, kitchen waste, you know, that can be composted, plus the uh, dressing with the manure out of the chicken coop. You can still see some of the uh, wood fiber in there because I use a lot of wood shavings. But this will all be removed from here, and most of it will be added into the beds inside of the hoop house this fall, just as soon as I get all the other plants cleared out of there. Anyway, I thought I would give you that little look at uh, how high the temperature and how low the temperature, and a look at my uh, compost that's going to be used here shortly. They've been roosting in the hen house for some time, but this is the first time I've seen them climbing trees in the yard. There's three of them up a little fir tree there. And as I have said, they are eight weeks old today. And I still don't know how many are hens and how many are going to be roosters. <laughs> <laughs> 